Good evening. Thanks. At least Arnie Christian answered me. So, <laughs> all right. Um, I'm thrilled to welcome all of you to the 2018 HR Today Magazine Awards Gala, featuring the CHR of the Year Me Awards and our HR Today Services and Technology Association Awards. I'm Elliot Clark, the CEO of HR Today. We publish. HR Today Magazine, HR Today Global Magazine. We are the producers of the HR Today Forum Series held around the world. And if you think this is hard, try doing it again next week in Hong Kong, because we are. It's the only global uh, event program in human resources, by the way. Same theme all around the world. And as I said, we're the managers of the HR Today Services and Technology Association. First, I want to thank our VIP sponsors, Agile One, a division of Act One, Allegis Global Solutions, PeopleScout, Rideau, and 7-Step. Their sponsorship uh, makes this kind of event possible. It allows us all to come together to celebrate and recognize achievement in the field of human resources. We'll be hearing a bit more about each of those firms throughout the evening. I also want to thank our table sponsors. Bacardi Limited, Cielo, Global Upside, Higher Right, Imarsat, and Corn Ferry. All of our sponsor companies sponsor the event or individual tables this evening, but the sponsors are not involved in any way in the award selection process. I also want to announce our first ever HR Today Awards Gala after party. Yes, it's like the Oscars in HR without the gold statues. This year, our after party will be downstairs in Sorrell's Bar in the lobby at the conclusion of the dinner. I'd also like to thank Lumes for hosting that party. We'll be hearing briefly from each of our VIP sponsors through the evening, and we thank them for making this recognition of the HR profession possible. So HR leadership, vision, and innovation. They're the words that HR leaders are continually using to describe the behaviors they want to foster in others. But HR leaders, such as all of you, quietly move through the organization and move the organization in important directions. They have to forge partnerships not only with the chief executive officers or managing directors with whom they work, but all parts of the organization. We're going to be recognizing these extraordinary HR leaders, both as a group and with some individual awards. And later, the awards uh, will be announced by the HR Today Services and Technology Association. Uh, my colleague, Zachary Misko, the president of our HRO member services group, will be up here. Uh, we have a great event over the next few days showcasing thought leadership research, technology, debate, because there's a lot to debate, and more importantly, a really big party at a brewery. This is our second year at a brewery, actually. I'm not sure that's a great reflection on us. Yeah, we were at Guinness last year, for those of you who attended. So it's our second year at a brewery, but last year was also sponsored by Corn Ferry, so I'm not sure if that's a great reflection on them, but nonetheless. <laughs> But, you know, the award show that we're going to have tonight is really important at highlighting the accomplishments of a number of notable HR leaders. I'd like to take a moment and tell you all about the circumstances and share some facts you all probably already know. To achieve great things in HR this year is more difficult perhaps than any time in recent history. So before we begin handing out some awards, let me give you some context about what I think you're all facing as the challenges. The men and women of the HR community have an awesome responsibility to attract, engage, and retain a productive and competitive workforce. But economic, cultural, and demographic changes are making HR's mission much more difficult. And if getting good at cultural engagement 
in your headquarters country wasn't hard enough, the proliferation of multinational organizations and the ease of communication and mobility now requires you to have a similar culture in every country in which you operate. Talent has always been a challenge. And a few minutes we'll talk about the impact of global economic growth on the talent equation. But let's be honest, hiring and retaining great people has always been difficult. Skills have become more specialized. Managers, your hiring managers, only want the top 10% of candidates. And no one wants to train anyone. All of your leaders want candidates with a minimum of three years of experience. That's from anyone other than themselves, because they're ready for promotion into a job they've never done before, and they're ready today. But anyone they hire has to have three years of experience. <laughs> you know, it, it reminds me of, I, I'm going to go off script here. It reminds me of a joke I heard about a candidate who came into a corporate recruiting office. It says to the recruiter, you know, I want a job with very high pay, a lot of authority, extensive holiday and paid leave, but only a little bit of responsibility. Recruiter listened quietly and replied at the end of the list of demands. At our company, we have a perfect opening for someone like you. The excited candidate replied, great, what is it? The recruiter responded, that opening is called our door. <laughs> I expect that will make the rounds at many HR meetings in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> okay. But global unemployment is down. And now we are actively reviewing candidates who a few years ago were considered unhirable. And we all know we're doing it. But it's worthy of examination for just a moment to tell you what the data actually tells us. We do quite a bit of research at HRO today. And one of the studies we do is sponsored by PeopleScout. Where's PeopleScout? Aren't you guys supposed to lay like hoot or holler when I say your name? Well, you're very English, aren't you? All right, let's try it. But you're now, you're, you're part, you know, you're a global company, so let's try it again. We do a study sponsored by People Scout. <laughs> They're very British. Which, <laughs> it looks at the global unemployment levels in 45 developed countries. And we're going to talk more about this tomorrow. What you see behind me is the world map from Q3 of 2015. Okay, so that's 11 quarters ago. Yellow is the most prevalent color. That is unemployment above 5%, but not above 9%. Green is actually between 4 and 5, and blue is under 4%. Now, that's the world less than three years ago. Here it is, last quarter. Map tells us two things. First of all, every developed country in the world, with the exception of Brazil, is doing better. In fact, there's a lot more green and blue. The second thing it tells us, by the way, is that Mexico is lying every year. <laughs> China's not much better, by the way. They don't count unemployment outside of major cities. The government doesn't care. That's how they do it. But overall, there's no region in the world that is not improving. And while here in EMEA, growth is not at the level, and this report, by the way, includes GDP growth in each, in each uh, employment market. Growth is not at the level in EMEA that it is in APAC or in North America, at least this year. It is greatly improved over where it was a few years ago, which was flat. So everywhere you look on this map, it is harder from both a talent acquisition perspective and from a talent retention perspective. In addition, candidates expect more from the process, and they are harder to please. This is from a career builder study. I love the picture, by the way. 58% of candidates who did not get a response to an application say they will never apply or recommend that company again. Think about that. Six out of 10, they don't like the response. They're down on the company, ostensibly forever. Now, here's another slide that has to do with how we respond to them. And you know, we're, a lot of us are relying very heavily on applicant tracking solutions, but only one out of 50 candidates, this is according to a study by the Wharton School where I went, ever talked to a human representative. 
Now, how many of them are turned off by that lack of attention? Now, by the way, I, I pointed out, I defended all of you to the Wharton um, professors and said, well, perhaps 49 of those 50 candidates should have never applied in the first place. Unqualified candidates are clogging all of our channels. So I said to them, all right, you identify the problem. How will you help? How will Wharton School and Stanford and the other schools that were present, how will you help educate the workforce to not apply for jobs for which they are not qualified? And all the Wharton professors said, um, duh, uh, can we get back to you on that? Okay. Everyone can identify the problem. It's hard to identify the solution. And it's not the software. So what are we doing to try to make up for this clog and try to take care of all the candidates that are calling us, we're going to robots. Now, we just did a, a recent, st we did a study, it's actually gonna be released, uh, you know, his presentation tomorrow for the first time, uh, sponsored by Alexander Mann Solutions. 62% of HR uh, executives, and this was a big study, we had several hundred people, uh, several hundred companies in it, are planning to spend more on machine learning, which is often mislabeled as artificial intelligence, they're going to spend more of it in 2018. Now, six out of seven say they're doing it to source or contact candidates because it's getting harder to find great candidates. We all know that. All right. Now, not only finding the candidates is hard, but some of what the candidates expect in these labor markets is difficult as well. Okay. So, reminds me of a joke. I have another one for you to tell your colleagues about a young engineer fresh out of a top engineering school and comes to interview with the recruiter, the recruiter says to him or her, what are you looking for? The engineer replies, I need a salary in the range of 200,000 euros per year, and that depends strongly on the benefits included. The HR officer, the recruiter responds, says, well, what would you say if we gave you that 200,000 euros a year right out of school plus five weeks of vacation, 14 paid holidays, full medical and dental coverage and a private scheme, company matching retirement, and a new BMW every year. The engineer sits up all shocked and says, wow, are you kidding? And the interviewer replies, yes, but you started it. <laughs> I just like telling that joke to recruiting people. <laughs> we all know, though, that how that candidate gets treated impacts how they feel after they're hired. So this is the challenge in candidate engagement. Here are some scary statistics from CareerBuilder. 78% see their candidate experience for a proxy on how the company treats people. So think about that. 75% of the candidates in the same study said that how they were onboarded was their first measure of how engaged they should be. Note the words, they should be with the company, and scariest of all is almost all of them said they never had any contact, even text messages or emails, with their hiring manager from the day of their last interview to the day they started. That is part of the challenge for HR. Your jobs would be easier if the hiring managers all cooperated, but they don't. If you want to understand managers better, or employees at any level, we're now entering an age of what industry pundits, including myself, are calling the age of people analytics. We are awash in data from hiring, incentives and rewards, employee engagement programs, job-related performance reviews, and comp and benefits data sources. We have a ton of data. And now we can combine all of this into a soup or a stew that we can call people analytics. And that should give us better predictive models for human behavior at work. It should. The data is being used to predict things like flight risk, selecting high performers, managing compliance risks, and analyzing engagement patterns. But it is also creating pressure on HR to predict things based on as yet still unproven models of causality. So we're looking at this data, we think it drives things, we're not 100% sure, but your CEOs are still, and your, your managing directors are still asking you to make predictions on what is still experimental data patterns. 
And these tools are all based on the use of technology. And technology begins to, become, to be a pain point for many global HR departments in particular. There's a technology joke that says, if debugging is the process of putting in software bugs, then program, I'm sorry, if debugging is the process of removing software bugs, then programming must be the process of putting them in. In truth, and with all due respect uh, to the technology company executives who are here tonight, HR has a problem, but it isn't that software is buggy. In truth, the demands of HR systems and the expectations are so high now and evolving so fast that technology is already obsolete by the time it is released. Non-HR people talk to us all the time about change management, right? You go into your executive committee meetings, they talk about change management like it's something special, like it's not something that you're already doing every day of your lives. You're managing change. So in truth, we know that technology cannot, or we should expect that technology cannot progress at the speed that we humans are actually seeking change. We blame the technology, but the problem is actually the humans. We want it to do more faster than it possibly can. And yet, in spite of the new reliance on technology and the actual wonderful capabilities offered by the technology, capital investment in HR infrastructure has frustrated our effort to get the most out of it. Okay? Two-thirds of HR departments are relying on separate systems. This is global companies. Only about half have some integration, and one out of five global HR companies has no technology integration at all. That means your HRIS doesn't speak to your ATS very well, doesn't speak to your, you know, your uh, recognition or engagement systems very well. They're all in separate silos. So change is constant. It's ongoing. And it's exhausting. But against that backdrop of all the challenges I just outlined, there are great things happening in HR. HR is more respected and has greater impact on organizational success than ever. With increased importance comes increased expectation. And in spite of these challenges and the increasing expectations, we're going to honor a group of extraordinary HR leaders tonight. I'm sure you're now all wondering who these winners are. Would you like to know who the winners are? Tonight, we will recognize the people who have not only succeeded in communicating their value, influence, and capabilities, but have successfully connected with their audience. Their hard work, dedication to the industry, and ongoing interest in best practice sharing and learning is a testament to their success. Our members and this year's finalists continue to motivate their teams, their customers, and others in the industry. This year, we encourage companies to submit nominations for awards listed in two categories, company or team, and individual excellence, to share their stories about connecting successfully in business. The categories were published in January, and nominations for EMEA were accepted throughout the first half of the year. A panel of judges reviewed nominations and confirmed the finalists. Connection is the energy that is created between great companies, people, and technology. All finalists demonstrate this energy in their industry and in how they operate every day. I will announce the award category and then the winner in each of the three categories. When I announce the winner with a company representative or representatives, uh, please join me on the stage to accept your award and say a few words. So first and foremost, our finalists. Please join me in extending congratulations to all of our 2018 EMEA finalists. And our first category is innovation in HR technology. One of the main issues plaguing HR is that many employee experience programs have largely been reactionary, meaning that HR departments can only fix problems as they happen rather than solve problems before they begin. Predictive and predictability is the future mainstay of HR technology. 
Through the platform of this winning team, HR departments can create a data-driven employee experience strategy that provides a real-time look at all employee data and gleans the insights that are most important for them to constantly be improving. Through the employee experience management platform, HR professionals are now able to stay ahead of the curve of trends. Our winner is Qualtrics. Congratulations to the Qualtrics team. Thank you very much, everyone. This is a, a great honor for us. Um, this is an ex exceptionally exciting time for Qualtrics, and we're very delighted to be here and to be accepting this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Next, a Recruitment Team of the Year Award. The strategic partnership-led model that this team utilizes means their customer benefits from functional, proactive experts who are fully involved in workforce planning, talent management, and succession planning. Despite an increase in requirements for highly niche roles in areas such as cyber, data science, and cloud, they have made year-over-year -year improvements on core KPIs, including sourcing 97% of their hires via non-agency channels. They are experience focused and actively embody the customer's values and innovative digital first mindset in every interaction with the candidate. Their client's head of leadership for talent resourcing summarized it best recently when they said the following, it's a genuine partnership based on a common philosophy of customer service. Here, the customer is the heart of everything we do, and I really feel like our partner mirrors that. They get us, they get our brand, and they're able to represent us brilliantly in the marketplace, which is obviously so important because they touch a lot more people than we ever could. Customer testimonials, uh, worth, worth their weight in gold. Congratulations to the team at Cielo Talent Management Europe. Uh, there's uh, nothing like collecting a award for a load of people's work that I wasn't involved in. So fantastic uh, work <laughs> from the team. Um, so yeah, we've been working with uh, uh, O2 for nearly 10 years now. They're a fantastic company to work with. Uh, they kind of support everything we do, and the team on site are absolutely outstanding. So thank you to both uh, sets of teams. Thank you. Partnership in HR excellence. Today, companies are going global more quickly than ever before, and they need systems to manage their global workforce. They don't always have the time or resources to deal with antiquated systems or hire an internal army of payroll and HR professionals. With increasingly strict regulatory framework globally, companies of all sizes are scampering to comply. This company built a software in response to these challenges. The technology keeps employees happy and corporations safe. It simplifies day-to-day -day tasks, like applying for leaves, enrolling in benefit plans. For companies, it reduces compliance risks and automates, automates data collection. It makes it easier to run accurate, on-time payroll. It's like having an internal team and an in-house compliance officer on your staff. This year's winner created a state-of-the-art tool for its clients, providing each country with statutory items built in and approvals that are easy to obtain cross-country, both of which are important differentiators in the industry. The technology runs in over 40 countries with over 3,500 users and in 17 languages, and they were recently named one of the top 25 HR technology solutions by CIO Applications Magazine. Congratulations to Global Upside. Well, we're really honored to receive this today. Thank you for giving us the Excellence Award. Obviously, our focus has always been on clients at Global Upside. Part of that was the development of a product uh, that addressed the needs of the client on that particular day that they needed to go live in about six weeks. But later on, we built into a product that can be utilized by many companies. We have about uh, a little bit dated information, but we have over 10,000 uh, employees on it about 15 clients on it. It really does address the middle market solution. Um, and thanks again. 
please welcome to the stage Arnie Christian Von Der Tang, Chief H Officer TomTom Tom, Tom and 2016 Lifetime Achievement Award winner. You see that? Gosh, that was uh, one and a half year ago. My hair is really not going, uh, it's going south. Um, thank you and welcome everyone, on behalf of everyone, Team TomTom, Tom, welcome to Amsterdam, uh, our hometown. And thank you, Elliot and Team HRO today for hosting this uh, event again. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the HRO Today magazine CHRO of the Year EMEA Award winner for innovation. The base of innovation in the world of HR is incredible. Fueled by fantastic technology, let's face it, skills and talent shortages, and fantastic thought leaders around the world. Innovation is also at the core of the products and services offered by the company of tonight's winner. This is a company whose values have recently been rewritten, but has not There's too many words in a short, you know, the, uh, God, my hair, my glasses. <laughs> I've been coming here for four years, and the first time I was here without glasses and a bit of hair, and then, you know, four years later. The, uh, okay, let me go again. This is a company whose values have recently been rewritten, but has not lost focus to the fact that they can point to their technology saving six to seven lives every day of the calendar year going back decades and when their products are called upon for a civilian, law enforcement, maritime or military use, they simply have to work. But their 2,000 plus employees and the executive team needed to be professionalized to exist in a new and changing landscape of their industry. From this blank canvas, the CHRO working with the CEO and the executive team sought to recreate culture and did so in innovative ways that mirrored the values they wanted to reinforce. The details are too many to go into in this kind of award format, but they are impressive. Equally impressive is all of this was accomplished in only three years, and this week is her third anniversary. So happy anniversary and congratulations on being named HRO today. Here we go again. Magazine CHRO of the Year, EMEA 2018, for innovation. Our winner is Natasha Dillo. Please join me on stage and we're going to play a brief video uh, from your company about the impact that you've had for the company. So we were absolutely delighted to nominate Natasha Dillon for CHRO um, of the year um, because she's begun a complete transformation of Immersat's people strategy in the last couple of years. Uh, Natasha is an absolute force of nature. She's not just a very talented businesswoman, but she's someone with an absolute passion to empower and enrich the potential of our people. And in just a few short months in Immersat, she's laid the foundation to that process, a process that will cascade through the years to come and absolutely transform our potential as a business. And for those foundations and for the passion and skill, leadership and management that she brings of her HR team, um, she absolutely deserves this nomination. I think your hair and your glasses look lovely, actually. Um, so just before I break this, just want to say a massive thank you for this award. It's a real honour to receive it, but I think the real thanks go to my team, some of whom are here this evening. So over the last 18 months, two years, we've been through a huge transformation journey, and I would not be standing here this evening without all of your hard work and support. Thank you. Think about these awards. We think about the lives that we touch. So I want to congratulate Natasha Dillon and the Marsat staff for a richly deserved award. But I also want to point out that I have a very good friend who was injured on an African safari about three months ago. Had his guide not had an MRSAT phone, uh, his injuries would have been far worse. Okay, So the phone's a product. 
but the product is designed, created, manufactured by people. And HR is what engages and motivates the people. So on behalf of my friend and his wife and two children, by the way, thank you to the Marsat team. That day, he was probably one of the six or seven lives in Marsat saves every single day. Please welcome to the stage Oscar Gonzalez, Human Resources Director, Congaladas, Navarra, in 2017 for Profit Winner. Thank you. Um, it's a great pleasure to be back and, uh, at the HRO Today magazine, CHRO of, uh, of the Year, MA Awards. I have the honor to announce the award for the CHRO of the Year, EMEA, for Profit Award. The job of the, of the CHRO in a for profit company is to not only contribute to employee well being and employee engagement, but also to use HR as a strategic function to help the company achieve its financial objectives for growth and profit. Our winner tonight is responsible for the people strategy of a company that sells its people's intellectual prowess and technical skill and as its primary product. Under our winner's leadership, this company has won the Employer Award in nine countries in Europe and APAC for every year for the, na for the past five years. They have won numerous other awards all over the world. He has overhauled the HR systems, overseen numerous merger integrations, and developed programs to greatly improve employee communications with each other and with the company leadership. He has also recognized that to remain competitive and maintain a 10% year over year, growth rate. They must grow leadership capability faster than the company grows, and he has implemented learning and development programs to achieve that. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2018 HRO Today magazine CHR CHRO of the Year for Pro Profit EMA is Pradeep Baskaran of Cognizant Technology. As Pradeep uh, joins me on the stage, we will play a brief video from his company describing his role as a head of HR of M EMA, APAC, and LATAM. Pradeep creates innovative HR solutions and programs. He's compassionate and supportive. He's an inspiring and energetic leader. He empowers and challenges his team. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What an awesome evening. Thanks, thanks HRO for this wonderful award. And thanks to my entire team spread across the global growth markets Without them, it would be impossible to handle this scale, uh, the kind of disruption which we are looking at, which, which, which we are seeing in these markets. So thanks to each one of them, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Moitza Damater, Corporate HR Executive Director, Atlantic Grupa, and 2017 Lifetime Achievement Award winner. Hi to all. I have to say that uh, this process here with HRO magazine kind of reminded me of uh, some of the relationship with CIA almost, because last year when I was here, I was really surprised when they announced me and they kept the secret of who is the winner really, really well kept. This year I thought, okay, I am the one who is announcing, so I will have the information much more in advance and I will be able to prepare. But this actually didn't happen as well. 
So <laughs> it is almost like in Oscars with, uh, with the envelopes, but we have to give a short announcement, and therefore I'm going to do that now. I have the honor to present the award for HRO Today magazine, CHRO of the Year Sustainable Workforce. This reward recognizes organizations that have made workforce strategy and programs a competitive advantage. When you are in a service industry where the caliber of the workforce determines the success, everything has to be geared around attracting and retaining top talents. Our winner tonight has had the challenge of creating and leveraging culture to make workforce, much of which is customer facing, a competitive advantage. He is often described as an individual who is willing to take personal risk and to be bold and demonstrate personal and professional courage, moving across several industries to make a difference by driving ager initiatives that have galvanized the workforce to see past the short term challenges to the long term opportunities. In his most recent role as a CHRO, he focused first on creating a sound HR services organization, then on comprehensive leadership development program that has to date trained 6,600 managers in the company, followed by cultural realignment that has been rolled out to more than 50,000 associates globally. As a participant in the Organizational Health Index program, this company has improved in now has improved now and is, and is now above the industry standard in all nine areas, which is also linked to the improved overall company performance. So, the 2018 EMEA HRO Today magazine CHRO of the Year <laughs> Sustainable Workhorse is Hein Knappen of ING. <laughs> and as we call Hans, we will see the video of the announcement. Hein is an incredibly visionary and courageous leader. He's driven major transformation at ING, delivering really tangible outcomes. I think his biggest contribution to ING has been how he's changed our perspectives on leadership. He's also built a completely different HR organization with global people services and communities of expertise to build great quality people solutions. Working in human resources and ING is almost like doing a second MBA. On a personal note, I would also add Hein is demanding, caring, fun and a great boss. What I appreciate about Hein is he has a wicked sense of humor and makes me laugh. So it's just, I was a, a bit afraid that you're just mistaking persons, with some, but that's, it's, so I'm very grateful of getting this, uh, this award after 100 years in HR. And, I, and I, I remember well when I joined in HR, it was personnel. And you were in a factory, you were less, less than support, you see. And I'm not sure whether I, when I would apply today in HR with the knowledge of then, I probably would never have been admitted. Now, we have made such a growth in, in performance and, and in impact to the business. And it also it is sort of credibility on the back of increased professionalism. And if I look at the team that I'm fortunate enough to lead, those are such great professionals. And in fact, they have managed to get me this award, which I'm very grateful for. So thank you very much for this appreciation. And let's go on to improve our impact. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> 